So Bella is going to start on this clear piece of glass because it's probably the easiest piece to start on and this particular clear piece of glass only has black paint on it, um, not brown or yellow. So we're just giving it a nice clean because if it's not really clean the paint won't adhere. Right, have you got your uh, reference, your other design, or yeah. you're just going to use that one? Just for now, I'm just going to use that one. Okay. It's only that section. So. so, is this going to be just line work, basically? Yeah, just like really thin lines. Right. So, nothing's going on top of it, and you're going to want to clean them off to make them nice and thin, yeah? Okay. So, for that, we'll use this palette, which um, is water only and has no gum arabic in it. Um, so I will just make a start waking this palette up. This, I call it black, but actually I never use black on its own. I always soften it with a bit of brown because uh, um, black glass paint is actually very black and it can look just too hard. Mm -hmm. So this is a mixture of brown? This is black with brown in. And you can see it's not a true black, but it, um, if you ever use a true black, it, I don't think it looks right myself. Yeah. So this has been um, mixed before and then left and it dries and you just um, bring it back to life. Do a lot of grinding. Some people they use a palette which is a, a piece of sandblasted glass because then the surface is slightly abrasive and it means when you're grinding up the paint you've got that extra layer of abrasion. Mm -hmm. But then you can't do this thing where you scrape nicely so I don't know. I've tried it but I, I always come back to a normal piece of glass. Right. So that should be okay. Now, what I would suggest you do, I'll get you the thinnest brush I've got um, because you want thin, don't you? Yeah. Uh, I think this one. I've got a question. Yeah, go ahead. So, how, if I do this, yeah. will I still keep like the free kind of flowing? marks will it kind of remove that well you can you can do this sort of thing you know yeah, yeah. and then if you want to once it's dry it's better to do it once it's dry yeah you can just take okay. away the bits you you don't want i mean you can you can you can do anything you like really um also one, i had a thought about yes. the dark blue do you think the black will show up in the dark blue? yes the black will show up in the dark blue <laughs> and in fact they didn't have the darker shade do you remember okay, we spent ages yeah, were you thinking you would actually prefer the slightly yeah, lighter? Because I thought the yellow would come through better with the lighter. Yeah, and blue. I was also thinking you've got you've got air. We were comparing the two blues to the orange and red, and actually you've got clear there as well. Yeah. Before you you start your actual paint work mm -hmm. on your piece, get your hand in on the um, light box. The light box is a sort of test area, so see how you you can experiment with how much weight you put on the brush yeah. which will determine how mm. thick your lines are yeah. and you can you can do wiggles and you know you can experiment with the so this area of the palette is where I've put the water and what you do is you pick up a bit of the water from here and if you want the paint to be thicker and make a blacker darker stronger line you will bring in some of this sort of pasty paint yeah. and then you can get um, see now I'm lying the brush more horizontally to get more of the water up the bristles because that will that will mean that you can transfer the line better but because this is a very thin brush you can't pick up a lot of water so you won't be able to draw the line for as long as you can 
with a thicker brush. But for, for this, it, it, it's a, it, you've got a free thing going on, so it's probably not going to matter at all. Now, I think the best thing you can do is just start experimenting and um, don't worry or be anxious. Yeah. Keep experimenting. When you feel comfortable, make a start on your piece. If you don't like it, mm. um, wipe it off and start again. Yeah. You've got all these brushes here. Mm. So if you find these ones difficult mm. to handle because they're, they're actually sign painting brushes, I think, that's a, that's a more normal length of brush and you may find that more comfortable for what you're doing. So um, just have a little uh, look around. Um, you might like a scratchy brush. So we got these, which are basically pound shop brushes, <laughs> but they are perfect for some things. Like they can be really good for if you're doing hair, if I'm doing like a saint <laughs> or something. Um, so anyway, just um, I'll leave you to fiddle about yeah. um, and get comfortable. Oh. Yeah. I was about to go straight for the glass then. Oh, well, you can do. You can. A little bit of experiment. Wait, Sophie, did you say... I think I have a, a distant memory. Do you say you can't paint over the lead paint twice? You can't do that? Well, because you're going for a very loose approach, mm -hmm. I actually don't think it's going to matter for you. Okay. Uh, the traditional approach to glass painting is that you can overpaint it while it's still wet. Mm -hmm. um, but I really don't think it will matter for you. Yeah. Um, Sophie, I yeah. I got a question. I put like I put a bit of lead paint on here yeah. just to test it out, yeah. just to see which. Do I have to like clean it again? Or no, actually, some people use uh, the paint itself as the cleaner oh. because it's very effective mm. for that. So um, no. Okay, the moment of truth. I think I'm done. Oh, excellent. I'm not, because I quite like, I don't know, it's... Brilliant. I like it. Yeah. Do you, like, is there, do you think, is there anything, any criticism? No, not at all. I love it. Okay. It's great. Thank you. I think that the whole effect of this is going to be brilliant. Okay, so let's have a look what this piece has got to look like. Mm -hmm. So you want, the, do you want to paint the brown and black at the same time? I think it'd be quite nice because let's put this on here so we can discuss it. Yeah. Wait. So you've got the, the brown running into the black here. Yeah. So actually, I think if you take the same approach that you did with uh, the first piece mm -hmm. and just work it all while it's yeah. wet. So I'll get you the brown out. Okay. So. Yeah, go ahead. So do you think I don't need the gum arrow? I don't oh. think you do for this. Because the gum arabic is useful, so let's say you wanted to paint a layer of black, mm. let it dry, come back, and then paint the layer yeah. of brown. Uh, mm. But then here, that's maybe what you're doing. So yeah. it's just it's not what you're doing here. So that's 
Why don't you do some experimenting? Ancient brown mm. and what's this one? Umber brown. So we have these two shades of brown, yeah. um, which you can probably see are quite different. Mm. One's a, um, a cooler tone, and one's a sort of redder tone. So I hope you can see that. One's a sort of more terracotta colour and one's a sort of, I don't know, soft, ashy brown. This looks like it's mostly the ashy brown with a, a tiny touch of this to warm it up. So you can mix up a brown mm -hmm. uh, for how you'd like it. If you need to mix more then you can. Mm -hmm. How much water is the... Uh, just start with a very, very little. And um, cause you, it's, if you add too much, then you have to keep adding the powder. Oh, okay. And um, actually that paint is um, quite expensive, so you don't want to have to mix more. I mean, I do keep the palettes going for a long time. Yeah. Um, so it, I never waste any of it. Mm -hmm. If I do a big job, I do mix a lot in one go because if you want consistency across what you're doing, you do need to mix a lot in one go. So which brown is this? Sorry? Which brown is this? That is a mix of the two and to me it looks like it's most, mostly the cool brown with a bit of the uh, warm brown added. Um, the way it looks when it's wet yeah. is the way it will look when it's fired. I'll tell you what we'll do to start with, is we will just wake up the whole palette. Ah. <laughs> because then you'll, you'll, you'll get more of a sense of the, what colour it is. Yeah. This hasn't been used for a very long time, it's got dust all over it. So, I think this is one of those palettes that I was saying to you, I, I used sandblasted oh. glass. Yeah, maybe you add a bit of the warm brown. Okay, so Which ones uh, have a look at them and you'll see one's more of a terracotta colour. Umber brown. I can't. You see, I always, I, I never call them by their names because I get confused. <laughs> So this one looks to me like it's the more orangey one. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just put a bit of that and see if we like the colour we get. See it's already warmed it up. I'm not really sure on which tools to use. Okay, well what do you want to achieve? Actually maybe here, I, very, I quite like the, the, the loose kind of, maybe I'll use a hairdryer here by making mm -hmm. it really wet and then like blowing it about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like the loose marks and stuff, but obviously I'm not, I don't quite like that, but I'm not sure okay. when, I, when I would use it. So, let's just keep this going. Mm -hmm. um, you you probably mm -hmm. could do your experimenting now on this. Yeah, just to see. So clean this off yeah. with there's the paper towel and the glass cleaner. Uh, the hair dryer should be somewhere very close by. Okay. Um, when you get to the point where you want to have the paint really wet, yeah. or shall I do that for you now? You pass me that uh, water. Oh, I'm not. I'm not like 100% decided though. Yet, no, no.
How can I put a little bit of um of water into the? How yeah. do you make the? I need to just just a, just a little tip, and it'll come out. Yeah. How do I make it like very watery so I can blow it about? Because oh, right. yeah. I think I just want to go a bit. You want the brand to be like to yeah. flood. Okay. Yeah, like, Yeah. Is use a diff. Where's the water? Is use a different brush. I'm going to yeah. make the brush wet because what you want is to carry a lot of paint. Yeah. Yeah, and just. Mm -hmm. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want the black to mix too much. Do you think, should I let it dry and then put it on? Or? Well, now that... Actually, maybe I should put a bit more. You, uh, it, it, you, it's going to disturb it be, mm. um, because it's got no gum arabic in it. That's so what we need to do is get your black with, with oil, I'd say. So this is the palette with the black with oil. And you can see that it looks quite different. It actually still looks slightly wet. It's not. It's just that's what it looks like when it's mixed with oil. Um, so um, we'll bring this back to life. Which uh, the oil I use is um, lavender. So we will start to smell like boutique in a minute. Um, now you have to use dedicated brushes. Uh, because you can't mix oil and water, as you have often heard, I'm sure. So, and actually, I don't have any dedicated oil brushes. So I will, I will use the water brushes, and I'll have to just clean them very, very thoroughly with white spirit afterwards. I'm going to pour it into the lid <laughs> because it's not got a controllable top. Um, after you've done the oil paint, I wouldn't try and put the water paint on top of the oil because this oil, as you can see, it doesn't really dry. Um, whereas this will dry, yeah. like it has done here. Because yeah. um, maybe I should go over the lines in the background. Yeah. So. So don't get that mixed up with the water palette. No, I don't um, And we've got more oil we can add to that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to add oil, oil on this so that we don't get them confused. Oil. So you don't get them confused. Mm -hmm. Is the stuff underneath dry? Um, actually, maybe.
I'll use like the back of a brush to go over it. Yes. Because well, I, I know you, we have to keep it like separated. From yeah, the you head. can. Yeah. So I'll just move it. Um, you can use the back of that brush if you want. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think I'm done. Brilliant. Let's have a loose.